Welcome back. So now we'll look at stoichiometry and in particular mass mass problems, which as I like to call it more appropriately as opposed to weight weight. So we'll go through these. I think we'll, we'll uh, omit number four here, but we'll look at the rest of them at least. Uh, before we do that, we'll make up a question here in which we use stoichiometry that you used back in physical science. So let's say we have, um, let's make an easy one. Let's make the formation of water. Hydrogen plus oxygen, making good old H2O. If we were to balance it out, of course, we need two O's over here, and we get that over there. And let's say we're starting off with 3.0 grams of hydrogen, and we want to figure out how many grams of water is produced. And uh, we'll assume that we have an excess amount of oxygen. So we have as more than enough than we need, because otherwise it turns into a limiting reagent question, right? So, of course, in order to do this, we have to look at the mole ratio here. Now, this one's not too bad. It's a 2 to 2 ratio. So what we have to do is we have to convert this into moles and then use that mole ratio and then convert back to grams. So it's basically a three-step, oops, three-step process here, okay? So in order to, just what we learned earlier, we have to change this into moles. So of course, we're going to have to find the molar mass of hydrogen. And because we're going to be going back from moles to grams of H2O, we're going to have to find the molar mass of H2O. So for every one mole of hydrogen gas I have, I have two moles of H. And of course, each H is 1.01. That's going to give me 2.02 grams of hydrogen. And H2O, for every one mole of H2O, I have two moles of H and one mole of O. So that's 1.01 and 1 times 16.00. Oh, oh. So 2 plus 16, of course, 18.02 grams per mole of water. All right, so breaking this down into two, three steps. So first of all, change grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. So let's start off with our 3.0. And here it doesn't hurt to write down what the compound is that we're dealing with. We're dealing with hydrogen. And we're going from grams of hydrogen to moles of hydrogen. So of course that involves changing mass to moles. So one mole over the molar mass, one mole over the molar mass, you can see how we do that. 2.02. .02. And of course, if you know if you're doing it right, if you can cancel off those units. So if we were to stop the question right now, we would be there. Of course, the next step we need to do is to go from moles of one substance to moles of another substance. Moles of So starting point, moles of hydrogen, to moles of H2O. So moles of hydrogen to moles of H2O. And of course, as we saw here, two to two. Two to two. Now, even though that's not going to change the, cal the calculation, we need, still need to show that step to show that we're converting moles of hydrogen to moles of H2O when ending up at that spot. And of course, yes, again, moles of H2O, moles of H2O. If I was to stop the question, moles of H2O. Sorry, that was moles of H2 cancelled. I'm here. So the last step I need to change into grams. And uh, to do that, for every one mole of H2O, it's 18.02 grams of H2O. Now, common mistakes that people make is that they take this 2 and they somehow think that this gram molar mass is per 2 moles. No, these coefficients only come into play in the middle step. Equation coefficients. Efficients, I didn't spell that right. So those come into play in the middle space. Over here is just simply a molar mass. Use your molar mass. 
use your molar mass. So we're always talking about grams per one mole. Okay? And then of course I'm calculating this out. 3 times 2 times 18 divided by 2 times 2. Uh, so what we get there is, now of course these are going to cancel, so it's really just 3 times 18.02 divided by 2.02 .02, and I get 26. 26. Let's move this paper up here. So 26.72237 grams of H2O. But of course I need to get Siggy with it here. I have one, two, three sig figs. One, two, three sig figs. This is going to round off to be 26.8 grams of H2O. So that is how we do a stoich uh, stoichiometry calculation. Okay. Now if you look back at that original sheet... I'll give you some hints in terms of what the uh, equations look like. So over here, carbon dioxide is produced in the reaction between calcium carbonate and hydrochloric acid. So calcium carbonate, and of course we know calcium is 2 plus, carbonate is 2 minus, so they come together 1 to 1. And hydrochloric acid, so this is going to give us uh, calcium chloride. So calcium and chloride, right? One, one to two, and we're also going to get CO2 and H2O. So it's all balanced out, I believe. Let's see here. Uh, oh, we need to put a two in front of here to give us two chlorides, two H's, two H's. We're good. So we have carbon dioxide being produced. So how many grams of calcium carbonate would be needed to react 15 grams of hydrochloric acid? Okay, so this is a case in which we are going to be uh, converting to moles, then going from moles to moles, and then lastly moles to grams. So we're going to be going that direction in the calculation. So it's a little bit different than the one I did. Notice we don't even have to worry about products. As long as our equation is balanced, we can go from one item to another. Sulfur dioxide may be oxidized to sulfur trioxide. Oxidize means we're going to be combining it with O2. And of course, this doesn't work. Four oxygens, three oxygens, so we have an uneven number. Double it. So now we're going to have uh, two S's there. So I have to put a two there. It's going to give us two times two is four, five, six. There we go. It's all balanced. How many grams of sulfur dioxide could be converted if we have 100 G's of oxygen available? So yes, it's very similar to the previous one. Moles, moles, and then G's. All right. Next one to give you a hint about this one. Lightning uh, discharges uh, in the atmosphere catalyzing the conversion of nitrogen to nitrogen oxide. Nitrogen, it should say nitrogen monoxide there. The mon got dropped off somehow. And of course, we're going to need two there. How many grams of nitrogen are required to make 25 G's of nitrogen monoxide in this way? Okay, so again, we're going to have to figure out how many moles we have. Then use the 2 to 1 ratio to figure out how many moles of nitrogen we have. And then we can convert to grab. So, two-stepper. Uh, the last question, yeah, I'm going to skip number 4. Number 5, there's actually two reactions. We have zinc reacting with sulfuric acid, and we also have zinc reacting with hydrochloric acid. So to do both pieces here, oh, this is like a single replacement from uh, physical science. Zinc replacing the hydrogen. Two H's, two CL's, so there we go. And then zinc coming together with H2SO4. It's a single replacement as well. Zinc sulfate plus H2, and I think we get that balanced already. So what do we have here? We have 15 grams of zinc in each scenario. And uh, let's see here, if 50 is in the reaction, how much of each acid would be needed? So we're looking for G's and we're looking for G's. 
So both of them are going to have to change zinc into moles. One to two to figure out the moles and then the grams in a very similar process here. All right, so you should be able to finish off uh, this assignment. Go back, see how we did that example one dealing with the formation of water by using hydrogen oxygen. You should be okay. All right, we'll see you again.